Now we are going to put all the knowledge we saw so far in practice creating a header using containers. Let's create a new screen and we want to do a header like we have in the apps, like a toolbar in the top with a logo, some buttons, a space, a search bar and the user image. Let's get started by inserting a horizontal container since the items are placed one in the side of the other. So let's go to insert, search for horizontal and select horizontal container. Now let's make the container to occupy the width of the app and add some background color just to make it stand out. Since I don't see the pane here in the right side, I have this button on the top that toggles the property pane. Now that we see the properties pane, we can go to the color property of this container and let's select perhaps this dark blue right here. With the container selected, let's insert an image. So I'm going to insert and select image. Okay, let's make this image have the same height as the container because right now we see that the image is bigger than the container. So we just need to click in the button here to stretch to the container and we need to decrease the minimum high because now it's 100 and our container in this case has 70 of high. So we need to go to the image and decrease this minimum high. I will put 20, but then the image will stretch to have the same high as the container. Now let's add three buttons that would be the actions for this bar. So again, with the container selected, I can go to insert, then I can select button, insert button and insert button again. Now let's insert a text input that would be like the search box. And again, let's insert another image that would have the user image. So I'm going to select image here. Okay. For this image, again, I will make it stretch and have a minimum high of 20. So it's smaller than the height of the container. Now we can see that all the items are already at the side of each other and I can just align them to the center. I can select the container and align it vertically to the center. I can then go to the justify in the horizontal and select the last one. It will make them space between. Okay. Usually I don't like to do this because I want the buttons to be close of each other and have a space here between the last button and this search box. So what I'm going to do is align to the left, add a gap to the container so the controls have a little separation. So let's say 16. And now here in the middle, I can add another control just to fill the space. What I usually do is I go to insert text label or just text. It will be added to the very end of the container. But now if I click on it and press the left arrow, it will go to the left and I put in the correct position. Or I could just go here in the tree view, click in these three dots and move left or move right. Okay, and for this label, I'm going to enable the flexible width and then it will stretch to occupy the full width that we still have left for this container. See how now it looks more like a top bar, a navigation bar. Okay, let's make it look even better. I'm just seeing that once I change the properties, the images return to align to the center. I'm going to click again to stretch. I don't know what happened, but okay, now I see that they are stretched. Or I could just make them to have the same height as the container, just to avoid this. But now for the first image, when I go to the selection of the image, the image property of it, I can select from stock images, select from the internet, or I can upload some image. In my case, I'm going to upload a logo. I'm going to upload my logo and then this logo will appear in there. Okay, it happens I just selected a dark logo. I will upload a new one because this one doesn't show very well here. Okay, now I uploaded the correct one. For the buttons, for example, 
I could okay. remove the fill property, make it transparent, and then I just have the text. I could still keep adapting the properties here. It's not what we want to do now. It's not the focus of this lesson. I'm just showing the design that we are building, okay? Right now, if I hover over the buttons, I still have a color that's configured in there. For this label, we have only its text property a text that's written text. Uh, let's just remove that so it doesn't show anything and stays blank. For this one, we can remove the default text so it doesn't show that text input in there. And we have this hint text property that we could just type something, search. And for the last one, that's the image, we could show the user image. There's a formula that grabs the current user image. So that's what I'm going to put here in the image property of it. I know we didn't get to the formulas part yet, but it's very simple. There is a formula that we, you type here, user, open and close parentheses, dot, and then we have image. And that will get the user image. See, now if I play, we have almost a very good top bar. I'll click in the image. I want to make it like a circle. So let's make it have the same width and the same height. Right now it's stretching, but let's align to the center and make a height of 40. No, too small. Let's say 60. The width of 60 also, so it's squared. And now the border radius, we can put 180. That will make a rounded image. See, it's rounded now. Last thing that we could adjust is select the container and we can add some padding to the left and to the right because the logo and the image are too close of the edges. Now the container selected. In the left, we could put 32. In the right, 32. Maybe that was too much. Let's say 16 and 16. And then we have this top bar that looks very nice. We still didn't put any action to the buttons, but we created the design. Let's just change the text of the buttons just to make it more, look more realistic. So for the first one, let's say home. For the second one, let's say my requests. And the last one, administration requests. Just there's a typo here. I'll select all the three buttons at once. And the font weight, I'll put just normal. And it's looking good. Okay. In the next video, we are going to do another exercise that's building a filter bar here. Let's say we want to add a drop down menu and a date control, a date picker, and we want to add labels on top of those. For this, we will need to use nested containers because if we use horizontal containers, that won't work. And I will show you in the next lesson. See you there.